All right, guys, good morning. Uh, today we're going to wrap up the last section of Chapter 8 before our test, which is tomorrow, and also before your Easter break, which tomorrow is your last day of school. So this is a very easy lesson, and it's either going to make your life a lot easier or you'll just continue doing it the long way which takes a lot more time and it's not going to be as efficient. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Today guys we're going to be talking about multiplying special case polynomials. And there's two kinds of special case polynomials. Okay? There is the square of a binomial and the square of a binomial can either be from a sum or a difference. The square of a binomial. When I have x plus y squared, first things first, do not, do not do this, x squared plus y squared. We actually went over that in 8.3, if you remember, okay? Okay, so... When you are squaring, okay, x plus y squared, do not go x squared plus y squared. That is wrong. What x plus y squared means is that you are taking x plus y and multiplying it by itself. You're taking the base x plus y and multiplying it by itself two times. When you do this formula, okay, I'm sorry, with this procedure, you're going to have an answer that comes out with a specific formula every single time. When you multiply x plus y times x plus y, you are going to get x squared, which is the square of the first term, plus 2xy, which is twice the product of the first and the second terms, plus y squared, which is the square of the last term. That is the procedure that you are going to follow. That is the rhythm when you are finding the square of a binomial. When you're finding the square of a binomial, you're going to take, when everything is being added, when you have a sum, it's the square of the first term plus 2 times the first times the second term plus the square of the last term. Now, if you were to do this the long way, okay, you got x times x, which is x squared, plus x times y, which is xy, plus y times x, which is yx, plus y squared. Doesn't that, when you simplify it, give you this? So, the good news, if you don't want to memorize this, you don't have to right now. You can do it the long way. The bad news. It's going to take you a lot longer, probably double the time, maybe triple. Bless you. And if you don't memorize this, it's going to make your factoring extremely difficult. And not factoring the GCF, which we've already done. That's easy. I'm talking about factoring trinomials. It's going to make it very difficult. So I suggest you learn it. And, you know, it's a very strong suggestion. Now, let me give you an example. I'm going to give you an example that has already completed the correct way. And I'm going to show you how and why they did that. Let's say I have x plus 5 squared. Let's think about it, guys. My first term is x, right? So, first term squared, x squared. Isn't my first term and my second term a 5 and an x? What's 2 times 5 times x? 10x, that's 2 times the first times the second term. And then what's my second term? 5, right, of my original binomial. And what's my second term squared? 25. Now, you want to do it the long way? Okay. You got x plus 5 times x plus 5. x times x, x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25. That will give you x squared plus uh, 10x plus 25. You will have the same answer. Yes, sir. 
Okay? The question was, how did I get this? What's 2 times x times 5? 10x. Twice the product of the first and second terms. 2 times the first times the second. That's going to be 10x. Or like I said, you could do it the long way. But you're going to spend a lot more time doing that. Now, another square of the binomial. You can have a square of a binomial that is being subtracted. When you have a square of a binomial, the good news, okay, it's the same formula. The only difference is that when it's a square of a binomial and they're being subtracted, there's a, a minus here. That's it. But it's still going to be x minus y squared will equal x minus y times x minus y, which will render you a product of square of the first term, this time minus twice the product of the first and the second terms plus the square of the last term. For example, x minus 6 squared. Well, first term squared is x squared minus 2 times the first times the second, negative 12x plus the second term squared, 36. You want to do it the long way? You can. Absolutely. I don't suggest it, but you can. You're going to have x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 36. Those combine. So I got x squared minus 12x plus 36. Either way you want to do it. Learning the formula will behoove you in the future, though. It will benefit you incredibly. When you're learning how to factor trinomials, for those of you who have memorized this, you're going to do them literally in like five seconds. Literally. For those of you who don't want to learn this, it may even be impossible for you on some points. So please, I suggest strongly that you learn this. Let's do some practice problems. I'm not going to do it the, sh the long way, only the short way, but I will verbalize everything I'm doing. So x plus 1 squared, okay, it's the square of the first term, so that's x squared, plus 2 times the first times the second term, that's 2x, plus the second term squared is 1. Tell me that's hard. That's a joke, right? Okay. B. Tell me, what do I got? No. It's the square of the first term, which, yes, it is 2m squared, but guys, got to start learning how to do this in your head. Minus 2 times the first times the second plus the second squared. Yes. But you got to know how to do this already. 2m squared, you should know right off the bat, is 4m squared. Done. Minus 2 times 2m times 5, that's 40m. Plus m squared, uh, 5 squared is 25. You want to show yourself what you're doing with this? That's fine. That's not illegal. That's perfectly fine. Eventually, you'll hopefully start seeing it, and the answer will just come to you quickly. Yes, sir. Uh, it is not negative 40. It's negative 20 because I'm a fool. I don't know how to multiply, apparently. Thank you, son. All right, next. First term squared is n squared. Minus, because there's a minus here, 2 times the first times the second. 8n, very good. Plus the second squared. Done. Last but not least. First term squared plus 2 times the first times the second, which is 48x, very good, plus the second term squared, 64. Okay, there were only a couple people that were following me here with multiplication skills. and I, I'm not trying to be rude or mean, but I am going to be honest. 
If you don't know how to multiply at this point, this is going to be almost, almost an impossible chapter for you to be able to do starting when we get back from the break. It's virtually going to be impossible, virtually. If you don't know how to multiply, you're really, really out of luck here. You have to know how to multiply backwards and forwards and correctly and now. If not, I'm not warning you. I'm trying to be preemptive. I'm trying to help you. You're going to suffer in the next part of the chapter. You have to know your times tables by memory up to the 15s. You have to. If not, it's going to be tough. Yes, sir. This is only for a square of a binomial, correct, sir? Yes, no, maybe kind of, sort of. Okay, let's move it. How about this? Let's do an example here. Let's do a good example. I, I have a square outdoor patio, okay? And the square outdoor patio is this part right here. I'm going to etch it in blue. That's this guy right here. This is the square patio. Those little circle things are little, you know, little tables and whatnot. Surrounded by a brick walkway as shown. I'm going to go ahead and mark this brick walkway right here in black. Okay, this is the brick walkway. They want to find the area of the walkway, which I'm going to go ahead and fill in with red. So they want to find the area of the walkway. Now, this is nothing new to us. How would I go about solving this problem? Yes, sir. No, okay, that's just going to give me the main area. How do I, what's the procedure of solving for this shaded area that's in red here? Yes. Very good, son. It's the total area, and not of the walkway, it's the total area minus the patio area. Guys, does that, does that not make sense? If you have this whole entire thing in black and you want to find what's in red, don't you just take out this blue piece here? Won't that, won't that give you what you need? Guys, is this the first time we've done subtraction of areas? Come on, man. You have a test tomorrow. you got to know this. So, what is the total area of the total area? The total area, including the patio and the walkway. What's the total area? Very good. So, my total area, which we'll call TA, is X plus 6 squared, which is going to be square of the first plus 2 times the first times the second plus square of the second minus the patio area. And the patio area is going to be x squared because the, the area of a square is side squared. So that's going to be minus x squared. x squared minus x squared. They cancel. So I'm left with 12x plus 36, which I can factor out of 12. So I got 12 times x plus 3 units squared. Yes, sir. No, absolutely not. It's 12x. Because it's the square of the first, which is x squared, plus 2 times the first times the second. 2 times 6 plus x is 12x. Yes, sir. Uh, let me see. You, uh, it's not units because we gave you units. So it's feet squared, yes. Yes. Well, isn't the patio area, son? Isn't the the uh, the height x feet and the width x feet? So side squared x squared is x squared. Yes, no, maybe kind of so. This is a great problem because it uses everything. It uses the um, the square binomials. It uses subtraction of polynomials, and then at the end you have to factor out a GCF. All right, let's continue. Difference of squares, last thing to learn today. The good news as well, 
You could do this the long way and still get the same answer. But when you learn this shortcut, oh my goodness, not only are you gonna, is it going to help you super, super amounts when you're factoring, but it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be so much quicker when you're doing the problems for homework and on a test or a quiz. When you multiply the sum of two terms times the difference of the exact same terms, the product will be will equal the square of the first term minus the square of the second term. Done, done, done. I'll prove it. A times A is A squared minus AB plus AB minus B squared. The middle terms cancel. I got X squared minus B squared. So whenever I'm multiplying the sum of two terms times the difference of those exact same terms, A plus B times A minus B, I'm going to get A squared, which is the square of the first term, minus B squared, which is the square of the second term. Literally. That is it. I promise you. And we already proved why going the long way. For example, x minus 5 times x plus 5 is x minus 25. Square of the first term minus square of the second term. x squared minus 25. Literally. You can do this when you have a difference of squares. I don't want you guys now to think this is how you multiply all binomials. Is that what this says? This is only for a difference of squares. When you have the sum of two terms times the difference of those exact same terms. This does not work with 3x plus 5 times 5x minus 7. It would work with 3x plus 5 times 3x minus 5. Okay? But worst case, you could do it the long way. Now, I'm not going to do it the long way. I'm going to do it the short way because that's what I'm teaching. So I want to find each product here in simplest form. I got x minus 3 times x plus 3. So this is going to equal the square of the first minus the square of the second. Done. Bye-bye. Number two, x plus 6 times x minus 6. x squared minus 36. Square of the first minus square of the second. Next, number three, 16x squared minus 9y squared. Square of the first minus square of the second. Awesome. Last but not least, number four, x squared minus 36y. Great job, guys. Square of the first minus square of the second. Done. Literally. No, oh, y squared, yes. Does that make sense, boys? Okay. Awesome. Thank you for a great lesson. God bless you. Good luck on the test tomorrow.